Welcome to Inside Games, the only news channel brave enough to still simp for Cyberpunk 2077. I was actually just playing it a couple nights ago. Unfortunately, that's requiring more bravery as the days go by. CD Projekt has, surprise, just announced delays to its next Witcher and Cyberpunk projects. Now, the current gen update to The Witcher 3 for PS5 and Xbox Series X and S has no release date. And the first full expansion for Cyberpunk 2077 will launch next year in 2023. Yeah, technically. Only the current gen update to Witcher 3 is delayed again since that actually had a previously announced release date, but this also means the first Cyberpunk expansion will land at least two years after the game's original launch, which is incredibly late, uh, based on CD Projekt's pace of releases with The Witcher 3. So we're left to wonder, yet again, what's the deal? Is this just more evidence that CD Projekt has completely fallen from grace? Are they now a busted game dev that just can't get their shit in order? Man, you're asking the hard questions, and uh, thank God we've got Charlotte here. That'd be easy and crowd-pleasing narrative to spin for sure, but we aren't the internet's bravest journalists for nothing, right, Charlotte? Mm -mm, no, we're not. Witch us up inside. Get us get us witched. Save me! CD Projekt announced the current gen update delay with a tweet on the official Witcher video game account on Wednesday, April 13th. In it, they say they've decided to move development efforts of the update to their in house teams and as a result quote are currently evaluating the scope of work to be done and thus have to postpone q2 release until further notice the lack of any kind of time window led several blogs to report this as an indefinite delay but CD Projekt SVP of Business Development Mihal Novakovsky clarified that, quote, nobody is saying the game is delayed in some monumental sort of time gap ahead of us on an investor call on April 14th. Yeah, so this leaves us in a weird spot. The delay won't be monumental, but we don't have a date. Yeah, it's, it's not very reassuring, especially given CD Projekt's recent trend of constantly revising timelines and delaying updates. This situation is a bit different in this case, though, since as the tweet implied, this update wasn't being developed by CD Projekt Red. Saber Interactive previously led development efforts, which makes this transfer of development a little confusing. CD Projekt seemed to be on great terms with Saber, who also developed the Witcher 3's port on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, in a September 2020 investor call, CD Projekt President Adam Kaczynski called Saber a proven partner, and that Quote, they already know our technology very well. So what changed here? This is just a theory. But even though Saber Interactive is headquartered in Florida in the United States, they do have studios in Belarus and Russia, who is currently committing just a... Boy, just a whole bundle of war crimes as part of their invasion of Ukraine. CD Projekt already announced they were halting all sales in Russia in early March of 2022, which included their subsidiary Good Old Games. Uh, if the Witcher current gen port were being handled in whole or even in part by Saber's Russian studio, kind of stands to reason that they would sever that connection as well. Kotaku was far less shy about making this particular connection, stating that the current gen upgrade was pulled from a Russia studio, despite that information never really being confirmed or revealed publicly. They got a standard no comment response when they asked about the Russian connection to CD Projekt directly. Hmm. One way or the other, this is not the first time this update has been delayed, is it, Charlotte? You are right, Bruce. CD Projekt originally intended for this update to release in 2021, along with the current gen update for Cyberpunk 2077. Both were delayed in October of 21, quote, based on recommendations supplied by persons supervising development. And just for your information, the Cyberpunk current gen update or patch 1.5 launched on February 15th, 2022. CD Projekt developed that update, the Cyberpunk one, in-house, and it didn't land too much later than their previous target of 2021, so that's some reason to believe that the Witcher 3 update might not be too far away. The Cyberpunk upgrade is a solid one, too. It added some ray tracing features to current gen consoles, you can customize your apartment, and most importantly, Pan Am sends you lewds now. Well, not me, because she's very comfortable in her sexuality. Just like the Cyberpunk update, the current gen update for Witcher 3 will be available for free to anyone that currently owns the game and will be sold as a standalone game on current gen for those that don't. Also, just as a brief aside, I always mention this in a way that's half bragging, but my partner does work for CD Projekt. And just in terms of, of what that whole situation has done to their staff and the disruption of their development, uh, I just wanted to put some points on the board for CD Projekt developers because they are actively involved with humanitarian efforts in Poland in a very direct way. Employees of CD Projekt are driving to the border, they're picking people up, they're finding jobs, they're housing refugees in their own homes. 
Uh, they're handing out food. They're, they're doing things very directly, and a lot of that evidence is is flowing through the company. So uh, I just wanted to mention that that uh, in the middle of delays, it can be easy to be disappointed, but they are humans, and they're facing some very real stuff over there. So maybe think about that and cut them a little slack. That's really, really cool. We do play video games to escape reality. Because of that, I want that fucking cyberpunk expansion right now. Give it to me. Yeah, I want, I want it to. <laughs> I want to get out of this nightmare hellscape. Unfortunately, that's not coming until 2023 now, according to the cyberpunk Twitter account. They posted that this morning. Depending on when it lands in 2023, that's anywhere from two to three years after cyberpunk 2077's original launch, December 2020, uh, for the first major story expansion. Uh, or DLC. Uh, that's quite a bit longer than CD Projekt's turnaround with The Witcher 3, which they launched in May of 2015, and then they followed it up just three months later with Hearts of Stone in October of 2015, and then one year later with Blood and Wine in May of 2016. What's the deal, Charlotte? Why isn't CD Projekt drowning us in sweet cyber content? The biggest reason's the most obvious. The game needed about a year's worth of post-launch patches and bug fixes to claw its way to the state it should have launched in in the first place. Yeah, even still, that math doesn't really exactly add up. If we knock a year off, the gap in releases is still yeah, very much longer than it was in the past. It is. Uh, in that case, here's a menu of other factors that potentially impacted development. Following the release of Cyberpunk 2077, CD Projekt initiated a complete company restructure they've referred to as Red 2.0 to enable development on multiple AAA projects at once. They also got hacked in June of 2021, which generally results in internal security audits that can slow down the usual flow of work. And there's also that pesky COVID pandemic, which forced them and every other developer uh, to pivot to work from home development. Oh, <laughs> and the war next door that just broke out. I can't forget the human rights violations. That's a lot of handle as a business. So I'm glad I'm not CD Projekt right, right now. Hey, they did share some good news, uh, at least good business news. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 has reached 18 million in sales, uh, while The Witcher 3 hit 40 million. That's a, I'm going to say a big congratulations to CDPR. Great job. Yeah, those are some fat numbers, uh, which is either awesome or terrible, depending on which Reddit comment you're reading or how you want to spin it as a video game journalist. The last official number we got from CD Projekt Red puts Cyberpunk 2077 sales at 13.7 million by the end of 2020. Now, I'm a pretty smart guy. I'm going to apply some very high level maths and deduce that that means they got 4.3 million sales since then. That means sales from 2020 to 2021 dropped 70 percent. That's a big number, Bruce. Seems to reinforce the narrative that everybody else wants to do, which is dunking on Cyberpunk, talking about how bad it was, and then only sold because all that marketing hype. And boy, was the game bad, right? Uh, yeah, I saw, I saw some some headlines run that was like, oh, Cyberpunk sales dropped off so bad. The problem is most game sales drop off entirely after the first month, especially single player games. You get one shot and then they're pretty much done. So the fact that Cyberpunk 2077 sold another 4 million units, almost 5 million, in the year after its launch, which is more than some AAA games sell in their entire lifetime, is, I think, more an indication that Cyberpunk will have sales legs for years to come, rather than it just being a completely dead game and an embarrassment. Almost no games continue to sell like Witcher 3 has. Uh, so even if it's keeping pace with that, that's very good. I'm kind of I'm kind of hoping Elden Ring sells and sells and sells. I'm excited to see how high that one goes. Compared to uh, rolling sales figures compiled by analyst Benji, his name is Benji S Sales. Benji Benji Sales on Twitter. That's all. It's on Twitter. Cyberpunk 2077 is actually outpacing sales of The Witcher 3, which people now agree was you know the good one. Uh, Witcher 3 hit 20 million in June of 2019, about four years after its launch. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is just about there in a year and a half. Uh, on top of that, Cyberpunk still has expansions and an inevitable Super Cyber Edition, <laughs> which bundles all DLC expansions and updates in a single retail package. The future is bright if you are looking forward to more adventures in Night City. It might take a while to get there, though, especially if you want to play with other people. Oh, that's right. Cyberpunk multiplayer. What's going on with that, Lawrence? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, do you know, Bruce? No. Charlotte? I can tell you that CD Projekt did mention multiplayer during their conference call a few times, though we still have no idea what it is or when we'll see it. When going over their operating budget, CD Projekt acknowledged some shifting payroll numbers by announcing that they've, quote, ceased further development of our own multiplayer technology due to the 
recent decision to start strategic cooperation with Epic Games and to use Unreal Engine 5, which offers advanced multiplayer solutions. There's a couple of ways to look at that, I guess. Could be interpreted as an outright cancellation of Cyberpunk multiplayer, given that Cyberpunk will continue to run on Red Engine, while the next Witcher game is switching to Unreal. So it could be like Witcher might have multiplayer, but we're giving up on Cyberpunk. Well, it seems investors on the call were equally confused by the statement, resulting in a few follow-up questions in the Q&A at the end of the briefing. When asked specifically about multiplayer, a CD Projekt executive that we couldn't identify by voice alone clarified that, quote, our multiplayer works from Red Engine to Unreal, and that since Unreal offers the very features they were in the process of developing, they, quote, abandoned the R&D work on adding multiplayer features to Red Engine, and luckily this didn't result in any layoffs in the studio. Okay, all right, well, I guess that wraps up about all the news we could extract from today's briefing. Uh, sounds like relatively smooth sailing for CD Projekt other than the war and COVID and the work from home and the humanitarian efforts. Uh, they don't have any 2022 releases uh, and obviously there's a bunch of stuff happening around them but I personally uh, have been I have been enjoying Cyberpunk and I really hope that CDPR knows that and uh, takes my enjoyment to heart and goes wow I'm glad Bruce is really liking it. Yeah that's that's the resident question isn't it? Uh, even though the world has, has yet to be done punching CD Projekt in the ribs uh, it seems like the internet has backed off a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I, I certainly think that they've uh, they've made good on their promises to try and improve and revamp the game. If it's not there now for people, at least it should be clear that the intent is there and they intend to follow through on it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, do you think CD Projekt has redeemed themselves at this point? There's always going to be that sort of residue from the, the launch, and I think it's always going to be a footnote. But I think they've done their due diligence for maybe a more important uh, community or slice of consumers, which is probably a more casual player that's not so plugged into the drama who will be buying not so many games in a year, right? And and this is a huge single player um, experience with a lot of notoriety and, and, and everyone knows about it. So I think it's just one of those games that's going to continue to sell, like you guys were saying, a long tail for people that maybe don't buy so many games. It's like, it's, it's great for time. And I think the fact that it works now, which... <laughs> Wow, uh, but it works now, uh, and so I think that I think that that maybe reputation-wise, that's going to take a little bit longer to 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 quite level out. But I think, in terms of doing uh, uh, r rectifying a disservice to the consumer, I think that they've that they've fixed quite a bit. I completely agree. Also, it's on really deep discount on pretty much every system. I think Steam it was full price, but everywhere else, like Amazon, I was seeing it for twenty, thirty bucks. Uh, it's absolutely worth 20 or $30 um, and your time if you want to fire it up on the next-gen console. I mean, and I keep hearing stories of the fact that it does work on the old consoles, Xbox One, PS4. Um, that's, a, that's a question I ask every time I play it, every time I stream it, and people are like, for the most part, yeah, you know what? It's, it's, it's running. It's at 30 frames, but it's running. And uh, I, so I think it's totally worth the 20 or 30 bucks. Um, and I think it's Hopefully, we'll stay at that discount for quite a while here. What kind of cool, uh, what kind of cool celebrity do you think they're going to get for the expansion? Maybe they're going to clone Keanu Reeves. Get the cast of Bram Stoker's Dracula back together. Winona Ryder. What are you, Winona Ryder? Come on, get somebody that's new. Get a celebrity that's new, like a Harry Styles or something. Oh. Bram Stoker's Dracula is a really old movie starring Keanu Reeves and Gary Oldman, and it's not very good. Just so you know, every shot is practical, Bruce. It's the Silver Age of Hollywood. Everything. There's no effects in it at all, Bruce. We'd like to thank some of our patrons that'll never socially dunk on us. Christopher Glavin, Jordan Slavin, Rook, Sean McLaughlin, and Matt. Hey, thanks very much. Bruce, I'm going to slide in there with my current gen update to that list of thanks. I'm going to tag on Albert Collins, Samuel Fisher, Joshua Smith, Stephen Winston, and an everyday Brian. Thank you all so much for appreciating the practically shot from start to finish Bram Stoker's, the authentic vision had the hair that looked like a giant brain, you know, this little claw, eh. Best Dracula.